Hey, CityCast listeners, it's Megan. If you've been to the Strip, gosh, in the last 10 years, you know a lot has changed. And in a lot of ways, the anchor to all that is the Strip District Terminal. The historic five-block building used to be the source for all the produce in Pittsburgh. And now it's an all-day destination for shopping, dining, working out, and more. There's the market on Saturdays, performances on Sundays, parking and retail discounts on Tuesdays. Check it all out for yourself in person person and at stripdistrictterminal.com. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, water rates for PWSA customers could rise as much as 70 percent over the next three years. And as homeowners, you stand to pay a lot more than a big commercial business. Today, we're talking about why our water authority says it needs so much more money, how the state is getting involved and what you can do to have your voice heard before that price per gallon goes up. It's Monday, July 24th. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. Ann Belzer is the owner and editor of Print, a newspaper covering the East End. Welcome back to the show, Ann. Well, thanks, Megan. Um, what's going on with our water authority? Like, are they struggling? Why do they need to raise our rates so much? They're absolutely encumbered with debt. Um, Why? What's going on? So, so a lot of things. Um, it used to be a city department, but to raise rates was politically tough. It became an authority. Separate from the city. Separate from the city that could, um, could kind of operate independently um, it has a board, mm-hmm. but but mostly it's an independent authority. And one of the problems was lead. Um, they had a, 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 ke- a chemical mix that, when they delivered water, uh, would also coat lead on the pipes. Mm-hmm. And um, due to lack of oversight, they changed that. So when Flint, Michigan all happened... The Pittsburgh Water Authority was like, ha ha, we don't have any lead in our pipes. And then they tested it and they had a lot of lead in the water. So that kind of created a crisis. And they couldn't change it back without the Department of Environmental Protection approval. So it took a long time to change the chemistry to the right chemistry, which now, once again, it's sort of starting to coat lead, any lead. If you have old pipes in your house, the solder's lead, the, um, a lot of times the um, pipe coming into your house is lead. And they're spending um, a lot of money. I guess it's was 10,000 pipes that they changed to indip- you know, individual residences to get the lead out. Yeah, if you go to PWSA's website, it's front and center. Like, these are all the pipes that we've changed out and are in the process of doing construction on. Many of them are public, like under major roads, like Fifth Avenue. I'm sure most of us have seen what's happening in Uptown, um, but also some private residences, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, a lot of private residences. And, um, you know, but it was kind of an own goal, right? They, uh, They didn't have a problem until they created the problem. Um, but it's good to get rid of the lead pipe. So that's yeah. you know, that's a good thing. Um, but it's also a really, really costly thing. How much are they in debt right now? Do you know? So their debt level is about 40% is about forty of the $209 million they bring in every year goes to debt service. They The $209 million is from, to, from rate payers. Oh, God. Journalist math. Okay. So they bring in $200 million, but 40% goes straight to the bills. Right. So that's over 80, say like 80 million dollars goes straight to like it's like your mortgage right yeah yeah yeah. that's kind of what i was thinking <laughs> right right your mortgage shouldn't really be more than 30 percent theirs is 40 so so yeah well how much does water cost in pittsburgh like for the rest of us like i guess what's a typical bill for like residential owners and and what do you think that's going to change so according to the pwsa and then I, keep... I love how you're holding up your newspaper to check your notes this is the greatest <laughs> so the Average person, I mean, and just for water, yeah. not for all these other fees, not for Alcacet, not for everything else, but just for water, not the extra charges that they have for stormwater. 
that person will pay like if you have a family that uses 3000 gallons they'll pay about they pay $75 ish for water just for the water okay. and just for the water that over 3 years they want a nearly 70% increase that's that's nearly a hundred and thirty dollars for a bill right for from a seventy dollar bill it becomes about a hundred and thirty that's not a small amount if you're you know a normal working person who's not you know like particularly affluent and that's what the letters that are going in are saying like letters from some of our consumers here letters so right what happened was you could write a letter to the puc that's the Public Utility Commission. I'm sorry, the state. I'm sorry. Yeah. Pennsylvania okay. Public Utility Thank Commission. You. <laughs> the PUC had I they have they had online all of their different stuff, um, you know, like the various filings from from like Pittsburgh United came out against it. Pittsburgh interesting, Pittsburgh City and the Pittsburgh schools did not come out against it, but they asked to be part of the case in with the PUC. Yeah, I mean, I imagine there's some of our biggest customers, like the city, the public schools. Um, Pittsburgh United has like a, a ton of people behind them. They're like a kind of a mm -hmm. coalition, I guess, between like labor and faith and environmental groups. Right. Well, actually, I don't know if this year they have to pay, but up until now, the Pits the city has not had to pay for water. Even the pools. Yeah, they didn't have. That's why, you know, you'd go into like Frick Park or something and the water fountains would just be running because they weren't paying oh. for that water. and um, But they're not against this rate hike, at least they officially. They haven't come out against it officially yet. I don't know if they're going to. I don't know. Um, but the um, Pennsylvania Office of the Consumer Advocate and the uh, Pennsylvania Office of the Small Business Advocate, they've come out against it. And um, but, but what I was really interested in finding was what are people saying, right? What are the letters they're getting? And that wasn't on the docket. It just said that they're getting letters. So when I contacted them, um, they're really nice, the, the PUC, mm -hmm. and they sent me all those letters. And, you know, there were some of them that were like, I mean, there's one guy who described himself as a senior citizen, and he had taken like a yellow tablet, you know, and ripped the paper in half. Like he only sent half a piece of paper and said, I'm a senior citizen and I will not be able to absorb this. Mm -hmm. And then Somebody did from down in Lawrenceville wrote that he um, that we're making the city unlivable. You know, for people who are here, they won't be able to afford these increases, and that for people who are considering moving here, they won't want to because of the water rates are so high. And if you think about Zillow, right? Yeah. If you th it says what your taxes are. But I don't think it, I don't know that it says what your water bills. It doesn't factor in water. It definitely doesn't. And because water bills used to be sort of part of our tax structure, and it used to be a city function, but by taking that and sewer out of of not, it's not local control, but out of out of uh, the a political control, then it becomes something that they don't factor in. Interesting. Yeah. So that I guess that's what people are thinking might be the outcropping of this is that even fewer people will want to move to Pittsburgh. Right, right. Well, so this rate increase was supposed to go into effect on July 8th. We're obviously well past that. It's been put on hold until next February. Um, and the state now is investigating whether it's necessary at all what happened to set all that in motion? So, okay, when it was really probably never going to go into effect July 8th. I mean, that's what they say when they file it. Um, Gotta love bureaucracy. Yeah, exactly. But you have to say what date you want to do it. So they put it in. It was immediately like halted by the PUC who said, um, we want to investigate this first. We're not going to just, you know, we're not rubber stamping it. So now I guess the next piece of this is that there's going to be some public hearings on July 25th and July 27th. So tomorrow and later this week. Right. Where do you think things are going to go from here? You know, I mean, the hearings are going to happen. They'll hear from customers, theoretically. Um, then what? Then the PUC will sit on it for a while. Um, you know, I, I mean, they, there's an opportunity that if the uh, PWSA comes to an agreement 
with all of the interveners then you know like the city this the schools Pittsburgh United they can come to an agreement and everybody can say oh yeah you know just raise it 30 percent or just raise it whatever um, I mean I don't I have no idea but if they come to an agreement on what the rate increase should be um, or if they say oh no we've decided not to increase our rates at all um, then it all goes away is there a chance that they could just completely reverse course? Like 70 percent increase seems like the kind of thing that like even if you back down from it, you're not going to back down all the way. Right. I don't. I Probably not. Um, but the PUC could also impose its own increase. So if the PUC says that there's a good um, argument for a 20 percent re- increase over three years, then it might do that. I mean, I don't know. I, I've I've never covered um, any increase like it's just so big and I don't I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, no doubt. Um, well, is there anything that you think that folks could do to, I don't know, sway the state, the PUC in their direction, you know, for or against in terms of this decision making process? I think it's really important for people to, to um, send letters. Honestly, I, I do. I mean, if you're I mean, if you're for it, yeah, go ahead. Um, but no, if you I mean, I think it's really this is a moment where they are looking for public input and they really are and the PUC I do believe that this is this is a time where you can send in send in comments or go and um, state state your case and that's an important thing to do will you be listening oh yeah I mean (laughs) I'll be at the um, in-person hearing for sure Well, if our listeners want to weigh in on the proposed rate hike, the State Utility Commission is holding those in-person hearings. Again, that's two separate meetings tomorrow. One is at 1 p.m., another at 6 p.m. at the Jaron X. Grayson Community Center in the Hill District. And then there'll be a couple Zoom meetings on Thursday. We'll have more information about how you can have your voice heard in our show notes. And thank you so much, as always, for sharing your wonderful reporting with us. It's always fun to be on. Thanks so much, Megan. Here's what else Pittsburgh is talking about. Another turnpike price increase. This one will be the 16th consecutive year that the turnpike price has gone up, and it will go up again every year through 2057. This new one starts on January 7th, and for the average toll payment, the state says it's going to go up 10 cents, or about 5%. Fun fact, as those 5% increases rack up, they'll always round to the nearest dime. The turnpike is like $17 billion in debt, but I guess every penny helps. And if you've been procrastinating getting your real ID, good news, maybe that deadline has been pushed back again to May 2025. That's when you'll need the new upgraded ID to fly or get into some federal facilities. Right now, you can still get a real ID if you're renewing your driver's license like normal, but it is optional and requires just a little bit of extra documentation. Officials are still blaming the pandemic for putting them behind. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking our show, please let us know. You can get in those DMs at CityCastPGH on Instagram and Twitter. And you can always email us. That's Pittsburgh at CityCast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See y'all then. I really hate technology, and somehow I picked a career that is fundamentally dependent on it.